to tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful queen squid named Hortensia, who was squid married to her beautiful wife octopus named Jehosephina, and they had a beautiful adopted daughter named Celestina Warbeck, who was a cuttlefish. When Celestina Cuttlefish was a baby, she was cursed by an evil narwhal to never be kissed by her true love, which was obviously very terrible to her mothers, and they tried everything to break the spell. Like, they tried going to Atlanta's community college to learn counter charms at night school, which was very impressive as they were also raising an infant cuttlefish at the same time and running a country. It's not important what country they run. We're not going into that. The queens also tried making magical potions to break the spell, which are very hard to brew underwater without the potion getting all salty and also all watery. They even went to go fight an underwater dragon to break the spell. But when the underwater dragon, whose name was Clyde, was slain, they realized that really he had nothing to do with the narwhal or the curse, and they were just really misplacing their anger and needed to go to cephalopod therapy. So they did. And then when Celestina Cuttlefish grew up, they told her about the curse and she hugged them and thanked them for their efforts, but told them it doesn't matter because one, it's fine. I was actually planning on being an awesome old witch lady who lives alone in a shell cottage. So this lines up pretty well with my career goals. And two, I was never going to get kissed anyway because cephalopods don't have lips. And Hortensia, the beautiful queen squid, and her beautiful octopus wife, Jehosephina, realized she was right, and everyone lived happily ever after. Except for Clyde, the underwater dragon, who died for literally no reason. He had a wife and four children. But we won't get into that here. The end. Good evening. I'm here to tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was the squeak, uh, this queen squid named Josephina, and she had a wife octopus named Christine, and they had an, and they went and adopted a, a cuttlefish, and it was cursed by an angry, angry narwhal, um, and the queen squid and the octopus tried everything they could to break the spell. Uh, they went as far as, as going to night school at, at the local community college, and they were doing that and running a country at the same time, and at also trying to make magic spells by uh, working in their kitchen at home, but they were having so much trouble because, well, it was also underwater, and the spells got all watery and salty and, and just didn't work at all. Well, then they decided to go fight this dragon named Clyde to see if that would break the spell. They ended up killing Clyde, but nothing happened. Ooh, lights go out. Scary. Um, then they realized that they had their anger misplaced and that they were directing it at everything ex except for the, the narwhal. And so... Uh, they went to therapy and talked about their misplaced anger. And so when the cuttlefish grew up, uh, she went and hugged her mothers, the, the queen squid and the octopus, and told them that it would be okay because she wasn't looking to get kissed because uh, cuttlefish don't have lips. And so everyone lived happy, happily ever after, except for Clyde, the the dragon that they killed uh, because he unfortunately had a, a wife and four kids and uh, um, well we we don't like to talk about that the end good morning I'm here to tell you a story about the queen squid Josephina who was married to an octopus named Christina and one day they decided to adopt a cuttlefish, but the cuttlefish was cursed by an angry narwhal. And so the queen squid and her wife octopus decided to try to do anything they could to break this spell. They went to night school while they were running a kingdom. And then when that didn't work out, they tried to 
uh, make some magic potions to see if that could cure the spell in their kitchen. But, you know, being in the ocean and underwater, it didn't really work out all that well because the potions would get all wet and salty. But then they decided that their next course of action would be to go fight this dragon named Clyde. And they killed Clyde, but nothing happened. And so they were, they were devastated, but they realized that they were misdirecting their rage onto everything but the narwhal. But there was really nothing they could do. But then the cuttlefish grew up and she said that it was fine, that she would never be kissed because cuttlefish don't have lips. And so she hugged the queen squid and the octopus, her mothers, and you know, they all lived happily ever after, except for the dragon Clyde, who had a wife and four kids. But we don't like to talk about that. The end. Story time. So this is a story about uh, the queen squid, Josephina, and she married an octopus uh, named Christina, and they decided they wanted to adopt a cuttlefish. But the cuttlefish was cursed by an angry narwhal. So they decided they were going to try to break the curse. <sighs> well, they went to night school, which apparently is very hard to do when you're running a kingdom. That didn't do anything, unfortunately. Uh, well, then they decided they were going to make magic potions. That also didn't work because, you know, they live underwater. So the potions got all wet and salty. Well, then they decided they were going to try to kill the dragon Clyde. And that, I mean, they did it. They killed the dragon Clyde, but unfortunately nothing happened again. So they were devastated because this didn't work and nothing was working. Um, so then they realized that they were directing all their anger at everything but the narwhal who actually cursed the cuttlefish. But uh, just realizing that wasn't enough because there was nothing they could do against the narwhal. Well, eventually the cuttlefish grew up and the cuttlefish realized that everything was fine. It was going to be fine because no one was going to kiss the cuttlefish anyway because cuttlefish don't have lips. Anyway, the cuttlefish hugged her mothers, the queen and the octopus, and everyone lived happily ever after, except Clyde the dragon. He had a wife and four kids. But we don't talk about that. The end. All right, everybody, it's story time. Today, we're gonna to be telling you a story of great love, magic, and tragedy. This is the story of the queen squid, Josephina, who ruled her kingdom under the waves. Queen Squid Josephina was happily married to an octopus, Catherine. The two of them loved each other very dearly, and one day Josephina went to Catherine and brought up the subject of children, and together they came to the decision to adopt a cuttlefish, one of the many, many orphan sea creatures. They adopted a cuttlefish, and at first, everything was wonderful and fine, and life was great, but they quickly realized that this poor, innocent cuttlefish was cursed by an angry narwhal. The mothers were distraught. They didn't know what to do. They resolved to find a way to break this curse. At first, they, they tried night school, but it's really hard to attend night school every single night of the week and run a kingdom, so they really didn't learn very much. Um, after that, they decided to try to mix magic potions to break this curse, but they were under the sea and all of their potions were diluted and destroyed by the salt water. How can you fix that under the sea? So finally, they decided to undertake a quest to kill the dragon Clyde. After a long and harrowing journey, they succeeded, but still nothing happened. 
the curse didn't break. After all of these journeys, the queen's new cuttlefish daughter was still cursed by this angry narwhal, and that's when they realized they'd been directing all of their anger towards these other sources, and all of their energy towards these other sources, and not towards the angry narwhal who had actually cast this curse upon the cuttlefish. And when they came to this realization, they realized there was nothing they could do. They weren't powerful enough, strong enough to stop this narwhal. And so they gave up trying to break the curse. As time went on, though, they began to realize that everything was going to be okay. The little cuttlefish realized that didn't matter if she was cursed or not. Because no one is going to kiss a cuttlefish anyway, because cuttlefish don't have lips. So, upon this realization, the queens and the cuttlefish rejoiced as a happy family and resolved to live out their days, and everyone lived happily ever after. Except for Clyde the dragon, but we don't talk about that. He, uh, he had a wife and four kids. Okay, okay, okay. So it's story time. And I'm going to tell you a story. Of an undersea story. First, we meet the beautiful, beautiful queen, the squid, Catherine. Who one day while ruling her benevolent undersea kingdom, fell in love with an octopus named Josephine. And they lived so happily for so many days. Until one day, Josephine brought up the idea of children to Catherine. And so they adopted a cuttlefish. A sweet, sweet cuttlefish. But they soon found out that that cuttlefish had been cursed by the evil narwhal wizard. So, they focused all of their energy on breaking that curse. They went to night school to learn about magic, but you know, they were busy running a kingdom, so... They didn't really have time to focus on night school. Then they started mixing, mix and matching all sorts of potions, you know? to try to break that curse, but as soon as they opened it up to mix it, the sea would take all the potions and just drift them up and destroy it with its salty, salty waters. So one day they got their power together and they got their finest squad of squid and octopus knights and they went to the Sea Dragon Clyde. And they destroyed him. Utterly decimated him. He was dead. Clyde had died. And then... The cuttlefish... Was not cured. But they realized it was all going to be okay. Because... They were going to love that cuttlefish. They also realized that the reason that the night school, the po mixing potions and the killing of Clyde didn't work is because that evil, evil, angry narwhal wizard was still alive. But it doesn't quite matter that cuttlefish is cursed because no one wants to kiss a cuttlefish because a cuttlefish has no lips. Yes. They lived happily, that family. They lived happily ever after. The entire sea did, except for Clyde, who died. But let's not dwell on that. Let me tell you a story that happened long ago in a sea kingdom called, well, that doesn't matter now, does it? 
there was a beautiful, beautiful squid named Catherine, who was queen of all the land. And there was a beautiful, beautiful octopus named Josephine, who was also beautiful and ruled some of the land. They fell in love and they got married and they, lo they loved and lived very happily. <laughs> And they ruled the land with a gentle tentacle. Now, there was one thing missing from their life, and that was a child. And so one day, Catherine and Josephine decided to adopt a cuttlefish named Clyde. So, therefore, um, they were happy. They felt that their lives were complete. They had a kingdom. They had a cuttlefish. They had each other. However, it wasn't long before they discovered that Clyde the Cuttlefish was cursed by the narwhal wizard, the evil narwhal wizard of the seas. And so they decided that they had to help Clyde to live a happy cuttlefish life. And so they did. They tried and they tried to break the curse, but they couldn't. They went to wizarding school and tried to learn about curses, but they couldn't because it was night school and they had a whole kingdom to run and 20 hours a week is a lot when you're running a whole kingdom and so even though that didn't work they got all of the knights from the squid army and the octopus army on the job and they tried and they tried but they couldn't break the spell they tried mixing potions but as you know in the ocean when you open a bottle all of the contents pour out into the sea and so mixing potions was not their forte, as they might have learned during wizarding school, but didn't. And so after all of that, wizarding school, getting their army on it, trying to mix potions, they finally, finally found a clue that perhaps the sea dragon Clyde was the source of Clyde the Cuttlefish's misery. And so they went. They gathered up the squid and octopus army, and they went to go vanquish the sea dragon Clyde. And they did. Clyde died. Terribly. But Clyde the cuttlefish was still not cured. They were, they were in anguish. But then they realized that, actually, it doesn't matter that he's cursed. The curse doesn't really do anything tangible. And the narwhal sea wizard is not that great at curses it seems and so they decided to live with Clyde the cursed cuttlefish just as he was because as you know cuttlefish don't have lips anyway and so they didn't have to kiss him which I guess was the curse which I never explained before and everyone in the kingdom lived happily ever after except for Clyde the sea dragon because Clyde the sea dragon was dead but let's not dwell on that let me tell you a wonderful little story that takes place a long, long time ago in the sea. In the Sea Kingdom, as it were. In the Sea Kingdom, owning most of the Sea Kingdom was a squid by the name of Catherine. And then there was a lovely octopus by the name of Josephine that only owned a little bit of this kingdom in the sea. But... Alas, they fell in love. So together they ruled the sea in their happy, happy union. However, after many years of bliss, they realized that something was missing from their lives. The thing that's missing in most fairy tale lives, a child. But alas, as they were both female, they couldn't produce an offspring. Also, they are different species, so this is quite impossible. So. Josephine and Catherine decided to adopt a beautiful, lovely little cuttlefish by the name of Clyde. And oh my, were they happy, for they owned all of the sea and ruled this kingdom in great joy, and everyone adored them and their beautiful little family with their cuttlefish Clyde. However, they came to learn one day that Clyde was cursed. Cursed by a narwhal. What this curse was, it doesn't matter. That's not important. We won't discuss that just yet. All that they knew was that the strain was put on their beautiful, happy life because their lovely little child, Clyde, the cuttlefish, was cursed. And they needed to break that curse. So they did everything they could think of. They went to wizarding school. 
it was a night school and they were super busy so they could only go like two nights a week or something and uh, kind of interfered with um, Josephine's Pilates classes too so she could only go to every other class so uh, Catherine was kind of picking up the slack on this class and uh, anyway years went by and they learned nothing from this wizarding school so they tried getting their armies together their vast armies of squids and and octopi together to vanquish this curse. But alas, nothing happened. They tried potions, but you can't open bottles under the water because it just kind of mixes in with the water and is all around you and doesn't actually, you can't, it's the ocean, guys, okay? So they couldn't mix the potions, so nothing could be done, they thought, until one day they got a clue. There was a giant sea dragon whose name was also Clyde, ironically, don't know why, doesn't matter, not important, but they thought maybe Clyde was the reason for this curse. So they took all the armies and all the empty bottles that were actually just filled with seawater at this point because they tried to make the, doesn't matter. And they took them to Clyde, the evil dragon, and they killed him, killed him downright dead. So Clyde, the sea dragon is now dead. But alas, Clyde, the cuttlefish was still not cured. But they decided, you know what? Who gives a shit, man? I mean, so he's got a little bit of a curse. It's like, I mean, whatever. We don't even know what the curse is or does. Like, as far as we know, it like makes him like a little bit hungry at 3 p.m. every day. Like, who cares? So just fuck it, you know? So they just lived with him very happily and just fine for all the rest of eternity in the sea. And that is our story today. <laughs>